people can go back and take a look if they want to get the uh, the full scoop on this. Um, we'll just get this thing going, Luke. So basically, what we got going today, obviously, football is a little bit a uh, little bit dry right now. Not a whole lot going on. Um, however, the draft talk always starts to pick up. And today we're going to be taking a look at some offensive tackles from the 2021 NFL Draft. Um, guys who are top on the Draft Network and Pro Football Focus. And Luke and I have always kind of had, I wouldn't say a beef, but we, we've always been a little skeptical, I would say. Luke, would you say skeptical? I would probably use more like beef because I, you know, I'm they are there is just garbage in my opinion but that's yeah. just me <laughs> yeah just me. got no problem saying beef yeah i got no problem saying beef. i'm not a fan of what they do yeah and, and to to some extent i i agree you know i i actually i do agree with look i i'm i'm not a huge pro football focus fan i'm not a huge like pre-draft football fan um and not necessarily pre-draft like don't like doing the, the homework and stuff i love doing that but I, i'm not a huge fan of all like people giving me the information let me put it that way i, I don't right. like it when you know pro football focus or whoever says hey we're gonna we're gonna take a look at everything these guys have done and then we're gonna give you a number and that's how good that guy is on a scale of one to a hundred it like I, I i just it's been really tough for me to subscribe to that always Support. has been um, I, for me personally, I've always been somebody who wants to go and watch the film myself and, you know, kind of let the film do the talking for the guy. Don't let me tell you what's up with him. Let's go watch the film. Let's take a look at what he can do and what he brings to the table and let's let him do the talking for us. So what I had a thought of and I've, Luke, I've kind of kept you in the dark with this because I wanted it to be a little bit of not necessarily a surprise, but I wanted a very genuine reaction from you. Um, here's what we're going to do today. I have written down pro football focus. Everything's behind a paywall now as I'm sure that you know everything that they do excuse me is behind a paywall so the draft network a lot of times when i use these guys i use them to see okay who are the prospects coming into this year i don't have the time to go through and watch every big 12 game every pack 12 game i don't have the time to do that i know that everybody's tight um, on time when stuff like that so usually i use that as a prospect list where are these guys lined up at so what i did is i went through the draft network and pro football focus and i just took the top three tackles that they have and what they're for the draft network network they have a quote-unquote scheme fit for these guys which i think i'll get into why i think that's hysterical later um <laughs> and just we're gonna see kind of how they line up what their film looks like and i have a couple i have one game from each of these guys that we'll go through and we'll take a look at so the first dude that we're going to be taking a look at it is uh Penai Sewell, I think is how you pronounce his name. Su Sewell, I guess is how I'll, I'll just pronounce it. Probably should learn how to pronounce that dude's name before I start, yeah. start talking about it. But um, we're going to be taking a look at him. For those of you who don't know, Brady Christensen, sleeper at tackle. Tackle. We'll take a look at him too, dude. We'll. Uh, I'll write that down actually right now. Um, and this is Luke. Uh, I'll let you talk in a, in a sec. But this is completely open. Like if you guys have anything to say any comments like we we love to be interactive with with uh people who are watching people who are subscribed so if you guys have anything to say please like feel free to to go crazy in the comments um but yeah we're going to be taking a look at uh organ tackle sewell first and uh luke if you have anything to say go for it while i get this bad boy pulled up i mean you know it's funny because i, I, I share a lot of the same sentiments as you like they they come up with this quote-unquote grading scale and they say oh it's this and it's like in any sport you're going to get got the, the goal is is to see how much more getting you're getting done like so uh i've always been uh, against it i do look into the draft network i like what they do over there um but sometimes they do have weird things like scheme fits and i'm like but you don't know if that's how that person really wants to use them um or, or if that's where they want to go in that person or, or they have like these reports where they're giving these uh statements on players like oh this person can't run sideline to sideline then i go and watch film and i'm like well, that's just not true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so it's those little things like that that I look at and I say, OK, uh, this this ain't what I thought it was going to be. Uh, but, yeah, I think we're on the same page. And like I said, being able to see what they're doing is good. What I would do is I would make it more full screen. So that way they, they can. Um, yeah, they can I'm seeing the, it's oh, the very okay, last you know, task screen now. Yeah, just do the whole full screen because right now you got us off to the side. Um, oh, like on StreamYard full screen. Okay. Yeah. Hang on one sec then, guys. So, so this is going to be a learning experience for all of us. We're going to do that right there. It should be and that then, last tab underneath. Yeah, underneath your that's, thing. that's exactly what I just got. All right, here we go. We're going to go here, here, here. There we go. Now how are we looking? Boom. There you go. There we go. Okay. Okay. So everybody, P and I see well. 
Sewell, Sewell, however we pronounce it, I'll get there. He is playing left tackle for the Oregon Ducks. He did not play last year um, because of obviously all the COVID restrictions. And for him as a, as a left tackle, he really showed where he was at last year when Oregon was uh, a lot better than they were this year, to be honest with you. Um, so he didn't play. I don't think he played at all this year. Maybe he played one or two games, but one of the games that I thought was really interesting was this first game from uh, either his junior or sophomore year when they played uh, Auburn. And everybody knows, right, Luke, you can you can attest to this. Like They just make them different down south. They really do. So Thanks. when you get this Oregon, Auburn, you know, Pac-12, Big 12, or excuse me, Pac-12, Big 10 against SEC, I think that that is a great, great, great yardstick for what these guys' athleticism is at. Um, and it's a great test for them in college. So we're going to take a look at a couple of clips here. Agree. Um, like I said, kind of kept, not necessarily kept Luke in the dark here, but um, what a play right off the bat so here he is right here playing left tackle um and suo th this is going to be a little screen here right and on screens you know a, a big thing that you have to get from your tackles is this show and release right here so as he gets back he gets into his kick love this big arm right there to get this dude working by and then we're coming downfield to block on this corner i mean th that's just outstanding look you got anything to say to that you know the one thing that, that stood out to me was how he sold the pass yeah blocking he, he he did the hard kick step back you know and then once the guy came in he swimmed over and let him go oh um and so right there, the first thing he did was when he did it, if you look at his helmet, he never takes his eye off a target. Uh -huh. He already know who he wants to get. He sees the safety up there, uh, up right there, number right six. Here. Yep. So he sees him right there. And the first thing he do, he kicks it off. Oh, there go my guy. Right. Never stops looking at him. Even though the safety's going toward the run, he's like, I got him. <laughs> yeah, and this this is such a good job too because especially you know O line guys out in space. I say this a lot when I'm doing film breakdowns and such. Like, you know, it, it can get a little squirrely out here. You know, we're, we're not used to having this much green grass around us at all. So when we're matched up with an athlete like this, you can really do one of a two, a couple of things, and you can you know kind of break down, try and you know kind of dance with them, get body to body, and get them out of the way. Or you can do what 68 does here and just run this dude over, which is absolutely phenomenal stuff. 58. Experience. Excuse me. Yeah, yeah, he, no. uh, he's geek too. Look at him after this play, man. He is fire. But you up. know what's special about it, though? You know the, the most special part is it, you see how hyped he is about it. But yeah. The more special thing is is when he went to go get rid of that guy, it was all biceps, triceps. It wasn't no full. He could have went full body blow and just tried to run his whole body into the little guy. He just yeah. pushed him. Yeah. No, it's. It, I mean, he the kid is an absolute stud out in space. Um, f absolute phenom. Let's see what we got here. It looks like we got a little, little inside zone deal. Yeah, I mean, he's he, he's an athlete out in space. He has no problem being out there with these big DNs. And this is this is just good. We're just kind of basing up here, getting guys away. Let's see what they're running up top. It looks like they got a little split zone going here. This is a cool play. It is, and the best part I like is he recognized the counter. Right. Um. So the guy tried to counter. That oh rip, yeah, that's, that's the weakest rip I have ever seen, people. <laughs> um, just want to put that out there to my defensive lineman. Oh. If you're going to do it, you got to understand how the, the the push rip drill works. You got to be right. able to push them back, bring them back towards you, and get your arm underneath to get away from it. Yeah. In this instant, he he basically ate that whole thing up, and and it literally looked like he was stuck to him. Yeah, but, and so what, what Luke's talking about here, guys, just in case, because I didn't even notice this when I this is why I absolutely love watching film with Luke. We make contact here, right? This is a good job making contact. As this D lineman sees, he notices this ball is going inside. He tries to give a move, a little rip by to get through that tackle. Sewell does a great job staying firm on that inside half. Very weak attempt at a rip here by one, but we see how he counters that counter in a sense. Really good job from him there. Absolutely. Those little things always stand out to me. Um, and, and, and we should look for those little things. And it's good to see that he's doing it a little bit different. Um, here we go. This is a good play right here. This mobility on the rollout. So what we got right here, guys, it, it, this is just a, a sprint out with our quarterback. OK, and when, when we're running sprint outs and stuff like that with our cue offensive line wise, you're trying to get to that play side shoulder. Right. We're trying to reach that guy, get around him. Don't let him beat you to that outside. It is a phenomenal job right here. That's this first step from Sewell is outstanding. A lot of times with this, we have offensive linemen who take a step working almost upfield. Right. So here's his foot there. Maybe he takes a step here because he's trying to get to that outside shoulder. You have to be 
be patient with this, which is exactly what he does. You notice this first step is a bucket step. Boom, right there. He steps back and that's going to set his entire angle up for the rest of this block, working to that upfield shoulder and turning right there. And then, of course, we have all of this green grass here for Herbert to work to if he needs it. That's a really good job from from him there. Any comment on that, Luke? You know, the first thing that jumped out to me is, is once once he again, once he gets the block right here. Now, you see the guy again, tried another counter. He, yep. he had a rough day. It <laughs> failed. But what I, what I want you to see is, is if you look at where his, his center of gravity is on the block, he constantly keeps that butt down mm -hmm. so he can dictate where this guy's going. The guy's trying to go inside. He never, he, he literally just cuts him off right here. Boom. Nowhere to go. He stops his movement, makes him move lateral. And on top of all that, everybody's frustrated. They feel like they're being held. But look at this. It's a great job. He just, he just, he just beat him. Yeah. It's pure power. And the thing I want you to see is look at, the, look at how much extension he has with his arms. He's keeping that guy off of him. Yeah. Look at it. You can see a full keeping extension. Keeping him at bay. Arms. Yeah. So, you know, those are the kind of things that when I'm watching film, I'm always saying, okay, how close are you letting them get inside your pads? Right. That's not happening. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, an another thing with this, and just this is more of just the scheme, right? A lot of times, O-line guys, when we make contact with this right here and we make contact with this DN, boom, we get here and a lot of dudes shut down their legs, right? And they try and hop, hop, hop and try and hop around him. Love the fact that he keeps running his feet, keeps working all the way around. He gets a great angle on this. You're absolutely right. Keeps his butt right in between that defender and the quarterback. It's a phenomenal job from him right there. And, you know, it's, it it's small things like that that I think are super impressive out of him. Um, and it's it that's really the difference in case you know I we don't have a ton of people in here who cares though whoever watches this in the future offensive line wise if you're an O lineman you have to be active with your feet you don't you don't need to yep. be um, it, out of your mind with it in this in the sense of like that crazy sense of urgency where you get yourself in trouble but you do always need to be working with your feet yeah as a as a former linebacker whenever I would. Whenever I would be sent on blitzes or rushing, if I saw your foot go flat, I beat you every time. Yeah, exactly. I knew I knew that you couldn't do anything. I just had to, I just had to put the power behind it, and I got to run and start. Yeah, yeah. I bowled you over every time. Oh, every time. Yeah, there's nothing. There's nothing worse than that. This one's just kind of you know we're we're working out here. We're trying to kind of false key this defense, right? We work our offensive line this way. We give that wide zone look right here, trying to pull backers away, and then hit them on a quick screen at the top. As you guys can see, let's see if they get anybody going. Not really. They're too good in the SEC to. To buy and, on and, and to me, if I was doing a film study on this for good, bad, and ugly, that would be a bad play for me. Because for, for this, uh so well. Yeah, because watch what he does. He's gonna overextend himself, and that's why he gets beat. You don't yeah. have to do that. Let that let let that guy go and trust trust your your, your steps. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, he does overextend there, absolutely. He, he overextends. Now, if I was a DN, I would grab that wrist and probably pull him past me, but that's just that's just me. Yeah. But I hate when I see linemen overextend because overextend. you're guaranteed yeah. right here. You don't have to do this. If he would have just trusted his skill set, that guy runs into him. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Completely agree. That and those those are the small things that guys are looking for every time. Every time. Let's see what we got. They got dialed up here on third down. This was a really good game, by the way. I'm sure that a lot of guys watch this. This is a phenomenal game. A little inside zone. Good call. I know, right? So here we are. Oh, so th this I really like because we're staying patient on this, right? And we'll see here. I really wish we had end zone film. But so here's what's going on here, right? We have our center, guard, and tackle. Sorry if you guys hear my computer working overtime right now trying to process all this but we have our it looks to be like we have a three tech right there we have a stand-up backer and then that that edge defender as they call it right now a lot of times with this because we're working out out right here a lot of times what will happen is when we get a guy who spikes in it'll bring this dude in as well and then we get beat over the top now i know what you're saying doesn't really matter for the play yeah it doesn't really matter for this play but later in the game you know when guys start seeing that then then things can start to get dicey and you get out of gap you get out of your zone things can get pretty pretty uh pretty scary for him there but what i love about this is the patience from from 58 on this right we're working out right here we see this dude spike inside on that we know that's not our job we're working right up field into this edge guy working right out of the box on third and two that's a good play and that's a good play in my opinion at least what do you think a absolutely i mean it's, it's the total opposite of what i just saw before in the first mm. play he overextended himself and this time he was 
more patient. Nice but the thing patient. that he did there, um, and I just saw it when you, when you he he actually had the audacity to take the other hand as if though he's going to punch the guy to his to his right. That guy somehow slows up because of this. And then he it allows him still to get his hands around yeah. to get back to the guy who's trying to get around him. Um, but again, he's not overextending. He's allowing him to come to him. And that's what you want to see. Yeah. The, the hand extension is out there. Look, boom. There's nothing for him to do. Uh, man, these guys have no counter moves. I mean, God, no, <laughs> no counter moves. But the fact that he took him out to play and allowed a player, to, and, and this is what you want to look on a lot of these these type of uh, reads when you're blocking. If the defender wants to go and you know he's going to be out of the play, then go, let him go. Let him yeah, ride. Exactly. Exactly. He's, he's doing just that. That's again, it's, it's more of the reasons why I think he should be one of the top tackles, if not the top tackle taken out of this. Yeah, this draft. I, I agree. He he is my, you know, well, I, I do want to go into, you know, kind of what we see from draft network and those guys later, but he's it, and just for right now, he is 100% my opinion, the top guy to take in this year's, this year's draft. Ooh, at the tackle spot. That's big boy stuff right there. Yeah. This is a good player right here, man. And this is dangerous too. And you know, a lot of guys might not notice this, but th this is a dangerous spot to be in as a tackle, especially when you're not cutting because of where this ball's going, right? We're working a little bubble screen to the top right here, to the bottom, excuse me. And this could be dangerous. If this dude's working upfield, we get the balls, we, we get a ball batted down. Maybe if this dude's an athlete, which I guarantee you he is, since he's playing at Auburn, he could pick this thing off. It is a good job of slowing this dude's roll, staying on his inside, grabbing and hanging on to cloth, right? Not a hold though, or hanging right on to him he's not going anywhere this is a good play from him I, I like that it's only a one or two yard push yeah you see what I'm saying like it's not a deep push um but if you look at the way he turns him this is the thing that stood out to me the way he turned him it's like he knew that this play was happening and he didn't want to give him a chance to bet the ball down so he yeah. turned him a certain way sometimes you got to manipulate the, the defensive player by putting yourself in a position that make them think oh they're trying to go this way or they're trying to do this yeah um if you do that, then you got some good things going. Now that that pass is another story, but we here for the for the tackle. Yeah, so, that guy's already in the league, so we're, we're, we're right. We'll leave him alone for this one. Right, but the but the tackle did his job of. Ooh, look, see see that. Look at this. Oh, see the counter, dude. You're right. He's really good at not getting beat on counter moves at all. Look, look they try to chop the arm. Look, they try everything. <laughs> that's a good. That's happened. a good rap from him. Look at that. You just stopped. Yeah. There's nothing oh. you can do. Ah, no. Nope. Sits his butt down, stays great, got a great base as he's working there. That's and a really the, good job. And the defender has a, a very good move where he's taking the one arm, extending it, leaving the other one free so he can mm. do the count, but it did nothing. Yeah. And oh, so, we, it, like, obviously, D line wise, and I'm assuming that you were going to get to this, Luke, but you keep, you try and put that arm right into this dude's midline, right? And by yep. the midline, I mean right into the middle of his chest. Boom, right there. Okay, now we try. We got to try and get around this edge if you're the D lineman, but we get that extension from Sewell, 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 like we talked about earlier, right? So now he really doesn't have a counter move. You can try and big arm this dude by, but I mean, Sewell's not a small guy. He's, he's not going nope. anywhere with one arm chop like that. And the best part about it is, if you watch his feet as, as the guy's trying to push him back, look look how once he once he anchors that that his body, yeah, it's just basically oh you're only going lateral. You can go left, yeah. you can go right, but you're not going back no more. Exactly, that, that, that dude got some power behind him. Yeah, he's he's a big dog. Here we go. Now we're gonna get in some really good stuff. Oh, here we go. We get a little end zone film of this. Oh yeah, see look. And so what we're trying to get here, right? Oregon, obviously, they run the hell out of their zone. So we're trying to make it look like we're working like a little inside zone with a wham here. They're bringing three across the formation. And you're trying to sell this the, this uh, movement to the left of our screen, right? And that's why we get guys moving this way. Now, it could be trouble, right? And we can see his feet get a little close right here when we get into this end zone film in just a sec. You can kind of see Swill's feet, right? We get a little crossed over right now. We're trying to sell it. But once we make contact, he stays nice and square. Doesn't let his feet cross over. Sits his butt down. I mean that dude's not going anywhere. That's a that's a really good rap from him. Absolutely. I mean, like I said, you the little things are things that I always pay attention to. So, you know, obviously you're gonna be giving them more of the personnel stuff. I'm really looking at those little small details because to right. me the, the small becomes the big. If you're lazy, that's yeah. a, that's a problem. I mean, that's that's what it is in the NFL, man. They will expose you if you are not dialed in on your game. They will expose you. Now, this one right here. It's not a bad rap, but I wish 
I wish it was more explosion off of that snap. A little more vertical. Yeah, because yeah. right now, look, look, watch what he does. It's slightly almost, almost overextend, but luckily the guy ran into him to keep him up. Yeah. But if you, yeah, right there, you got to be able to come off and give a little bit more explosion right there. Yeah. Just a little bit. Yeah. And, and it was something like this, right? Oh, line wise, you're just trying to stay on his inside half. Don't let this dude get inside of you and blow up this play. It, definitely not a bad play from him, right. but it's, it's not necessarily a, a phenomenal great play. But again, it's like I said, you're positioning, trying to get on his inside half to let him beat you across your face. He he checks all the boxes, but I guess he could do it better. I guess is kind of what Absolutely. you're getting at, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm looking at those little things. Because like I said, let's say, for example, Let's say, for example, somebody next to him didn't do their job. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, you're you you you're you're leaving a gap there that somebody can feel. Um, and I want you to I want you to kind of come off and dominate that person a little bit more, a little bit more forcefully. So that way, when you push him, you kick him completely out. So that way, if somebody do try to come in, you can now turn, get back into the play, and get him out of there. Because that big dude right there, number three. Um, he not he not getting back into that play. I promise mm -hmm. that. <laughs> yeah, you know he's not doing that. So yeah, see, I want I want to be able to push that a little bit different. But I'm not gonna kill him on it. I'm just saying these are some of the little things that I'm looking yeah. at. This is what those guys are gonna do, man. Go through with a fine tooth comb. Trying to work a little wide zone. I've never been a wide zone on the goal line guy. Holy shit, Luke. I know we're not looking at the guard, but look at this guy. I, I, <laughs> no, I actually saw that. I was like, yo, I, I was just, I was leaving it alone. I'm like, I know. Oh, like, I was going to so say, this, like, this is, I want to say this is the Lemieux kid who's playing for the Giants now. And he actually didn't, I don't think he had a bad year, but this one, he eats a helmet. Jesus. I think that's Derek Brown, too, who works. Like yeah, I think, yeah, I think that is Derek Brown, number five. Oh, buddy, not a not a great rep, not a great rep. It <laughs> is a good job, though. So, like, like I said, so I'm I'm I am not a big wide zone on the goal line guy. I'm just not, I th especially against a defense like Auburn. They're athletic, they're big. You're trying to move guys laterally. I understand it, and you know I don't necessarily mind calling it every once in a while on the goal line just to keep it in the bag of tricks. But you know th this is why I'm not a huge fan. We we don't really get a lot of vertical movement right here. Where's my back supposed to go? He can't can't really bounce it these dudes are just as good athletes as him so he's got to try and take this thing downhill you know we, we leave openings for us to get beat on the back side I, I don't know i'm just not a huge wide zone on the goal line fan now looking at our boy here so well left tackle he does a really good job on this right so a lot of times we can get confused as our left tackle with this edge guy right here okay but we know that we have this h or tight end whatever you guys want to call it i would call him an h working up to take this edge defender so he's got to work down the line of scrimmage right check to make sure that we're not getting anything spiking in and then work up field to this backer like he does here there's a good job i uh, honestly if I, if i'm being really nitpicky i want to see you knock this dude back into the end zone that's exactly. the only thing right exactly. you're a big dude you know that this dude is smaller than you you got to get your eyes below his we're making contact at the second level in my opinion he kind of bodies him up he's looking back you know oh did we get in did we not dude fucking knock this dude into the end zone get this dude out of the way and let's go score a touchdown that's the only thing i would say in this situation is it a bad block no we get the job done could it be better absolutely i think i do like that he popped he popped the d tackle though before yeah. he went to the next guy, yeah, so he took yeah. that right hand and he popped him before he went to the to the to the. But it, it, yeah, but yeah, you can't you can't be getting stonewalled by little dudes like that. Yeah. You, can, <laughs> you, you know, gotta, you if that was Quentin, if that was Quentin Nelson, we we are not we're talking about why is that little that little guy probably is somewhere planted with flowers growing up right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh. We get some nice end zone film. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yes, to go to hand. This, this little hand pop, we get it, yep. and this is huge too. You got to help your boy. This is a tough block right here, which is why they got their fullback coming in to help we give that nice little pop right get these two guys working there and we're working but this this should be an, an, an absolute annihilation this is a fatality yeah. in mortal combat we, <laughs> we can't be getting stood up at the goal you know what i'm saying we, we right it's it but really quickly as to why i'm not a fan of wide zone on the goal line this is what you leave with this right especially when auburn lines up in this front on the goal line look what we got here we're supposed to reach this with our guard i get that yes we can we can get that done he gets blown up but when you're looking at it on a whiteboard that should be able to happen we're trying to reach here but look at this gap we open up in the backside a gap i, I mean we, we can't have this on the goal line that that's the that's that's my that's my, my only gripe for this thing. You can't, especially think, when you're playing Auburn. 33 is an absolute dog for making this play. It is a sick play from him. But that's just, you know, one of the things, one of the things that I'm not a huge fan of on the goal line. 
I think I think it's okay if you're getting helmets on helmets, and yeah. that's the problem. Nine times out of ten, you're not getting helmets on helmets. Yeah. And so, um, oh my God, Poe running back. Um, <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> uh, oh Jesus. Now that's I'm gonna tell you, SEC. I'm gonna tell this, you. this is what, but this is why we love watching when conferences collide and you watch SEC stuff because these these are grown men playing football, man. This isn't Pac-12, like, and no offense, Pac-12. Pac-12 is to play some great football, but this is not your run-of-the-mill dude from you know wherever you're playing. But this is SEC. These are legitimate NFLers that you're playing against. Stuff this, like this, this is one of the shows. This is a bad play for me. This is a bad play for me for Seawell. Uh, there's confusion going on. There's no way that that play is called and and they both go after the same guy, the yeah. guard and the tackle. That something's wrong. So what what I think they're doing on this, and it's, this is just my opinion on it. We don't get the full thing because they get the snap. So what we're kind of doing is again that it's that sprint out, right? A lot of times this end man on the line of scrimmage, you'll leave. And I'm not necessarily a huge fan of that because this is exactly what you get. You get that backside pursuit, right? And if this dude's an athlete, which he is, he's going to chase down and he's going to get some heat on the, on your cue. And what, what I, in this situation, what I would almost say to do, like, and this is just schematically is to have this guy waterfall, as I would say. And so you step into your gap. If you've got nothing, then you waterfall back and you take this dude that way. You're taking this guy and you're working him upfield. Is he still in, in pursuit? Absolutely. But now he's got a body to work through. But no, I, I, I see what you're saying. I, I don't know if that's him or if that's just the schematics of it. I, you know, the more I look at it, the more I feel like I think the guard messed up because I think they were going for a scoop drill. If you go back and you look at it, you'll see where Let's he's see trying to take zone. he's he's trying to take over so the guard can go up, but the guard doesn't go up, and then he looks like, oh snap, this guy's running over here. Um again, keep in mind we don't know what the play is that's been yeah. called. So we're just trying to see like here we go. We get a fourth and goal here. Where's he at? Ooh. So he's inside. So don't get, don't get, let's not get confused on this. The, this is Oregon's like heavy jumbo personnel, right? We got our center guard and our tackle right there is Sewell. Okay. So we're going to see him work up here. It looks like he's uncovered. And once again, it looks like we're running a little bit of that wide zone, a little bit different here though. Um, much more, it's like almost like a mid zone. And this is kind of some stuff that I'm researching right now is that difference between inside, outside and like mid zone. Um, but we do a good job on that. This is a good job. We give that 33 a pop right there. Looking inside, got our eyes in the right gap. This is a good job in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. You, you, you cut off the guy who gets a chance to fill the gap. Huh. And yeah. the other guy had no chance because he was misread thinking they can go outside. Yeah, but it was a hole right there. So yeah, nope. Good job there for me. Oh, here we oh. go. I think we get a little end zone. Here oh, he is, right, you. right here. Takes that step, looks back side. This is a really Ooh, good go job back. too. Oh. <laughs> Listen, look if you pay attention, when he comes out, he's he got that right hand out, right, and yep. so he's he's feeling for it. He's looking left. He quickly turns his head and locate the target. Yep. Right. Boom. No. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, because and what he's looking for here, I think, I think, I think, and I can't say with 100% certainty, obviously, I don't coach for Oregon, never have, probably never will, right? This dude works over the top, okay? And once we see him working over the top, we're not going to go and chase this dude out of the play. He locates back inside, he targets this mic, and he gets a chip on him, and that's that's what it takes to get them into the end zone. They're probably not scoring on that if he wor keeps working out there, right? Right. It's a good play from him. Yep. Get out of the way, 68. <laughs> plus, plus you, you're understanding that if the other guys have already took that step towards the outside, the chance of them being athletic enough to cut it back inside, I'm yeah. I'm not buying. Find the next drive. For you know, I'm not buying. Like I said, the dude, looks, he looks the part, man. He looks yeah. the part. Oh, absolutely. You know, that's, that's the best part about looking at film. You know, I, ha I have a lot of people always say to me, what, what about the stats, Luke? I don't care about the stats because the fam don't tell me what I need to know. Yeah, hundred you know? percent, and that's that's what we were talking about, right? Like, it's as as much as you know, I appreciate other people doing the research and stuff. Like, it's it's not about that. Like, I, I want to see the film. I want to see what this dude looks like. Let me let me make that decision. Show me what film to watch if you if you want to, but like, let, let me make that decision. So, here we go. Their second drive from Sewell against Auburn. Let's see what we got dialed up here. Another like little false key we got. Um, this might be this is actually just an RPO. What am I saying so all that all that's happening here offensively, right? Is 
it looks like Herbert's going to end up reading probably the safety that comes down into the box. And with this receiver running like a little spot or a little hunt route, we have to lock on this end if we're this left tackle, right? We can't leave him beat. We can't run inside because then we're going to have a free shot right here. Looks like, yeah, our H is out on a route as well. And we just got a little hunt or a spot route right here by the receiver working out into the flat with our tight end. And we're just locking up right here with that tackle. So let's take a look at how he does doesn't over pursue lets him get to his outside show get to that outside so he washes him away right we're creating that passing lane right here and that's a big deal that's a big deal if, if this dude knifes in right obviously you have something dialed up for that if he knifes in i would have uh, what i've always told guys extend your arms run your feet get this dude into the wash right here he tries to stay to that outside once again really good with that counter working him right outside what do you think Luke? I, I think by far, first of all, let's give number three props for finally giving a good counter. But um, <laughs> I mean, finally, fin yeah, finally gave a counter that worked. Uh, but if you pay attention to even when he did the spin, it really didn't. He didn't lose him because, like you said, if he does knife in, you're allowing an outside lane for the quarterback to go out. And so, um, you know, what I, what I would like to see him do a little bit better on that counter is let him let him have the spin. Yeah. Right. Like, don't fight against the person's natural momentum. Let them have the spin. You know the play. Mm -hmm. um, but it is a good rap nonetheless. Now, I hate his footwork on how he took to get him out there, but it worked. And I'm not going to kill him. If you look at his feet, like that little weird chop that he did to get out there. Yeah. Let, let him let him let him find you. Let him let him come to your world. Mm -hmm. You don't have to go and chop yourself out there, but get yourself in position for him to come to you. Yeah, I, I think that he gets himself in good position. I personally don't have a problem with his footwork on this. Um, I think that he's just working out, kind of taking those zone steps. He's got a nice base when he makes contact. He does get a little skinny right there as he works upfield. You can see he kind of crosses over a little bit. Right. I don't have a huge problem with it, but I, I, I see what you're talking about. Absolutely. I feel like, I feel like the reason he gets skinny because he's trying to regather his feet right there. See? Yes. And yes. And that's the problem. I completely if, agree. If he, if he just, if he's just allowed the guy to come into his world. In other words, mm. what I mean is get into your, get into your, 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 your drop steps, but a lot of person to come to you to, so they can be more of a intimate thing. So right there, Boom, see, how, yeah. see how he let him he let him come to yeah, him. Absolutely. And, and by the time the guy makes a counter, he he, he overextended, but the he, the ball is out. But he got to be able to let him come to him. And, and in right. this case, um, he was I think he was trying to anticipate because you can see he was anticipating instead of just reacting at yeah. that point. Yeah, and, and with a play like this, like we got to remember, like we're playing D1 football, guys. It's it, O linemen don't just know what they're doing, they know where that ball is going, they know where they're going at. They, these guys are very, very well coached. So I would imagine, okay, that if you're Sewell in this situation, you know, okay, well, this ball's getting out quick. We're running the screen to the top of this thing. I need to get this dude out of the box right now. I, I he can't ha he can't have a run on the queue. He can't do anything like that. This guy is gonna play my set. This isn't Pop Warner football where guys are just running around out there having fun playing ball, right? This dude has a responsibility on this play. He's working upfield. He's your contained guy. So if we set out like that to him and stay on his inside half, he's gonna work out, which is exactly what happens. This dude's also super wide. We can't tell from here, but this dude's probably he's probably a little over a, a yard outside of him right so we got to do a little bit of work to get out there but we're still setting back instead of setting straight out so he doesn't run underneath but again he's playing us he's the, this is a good job template I, I don't even know what kind of set i would call this i mean it's obviously just a regular kick set but he's kind of tempoing that guy out there if that makes sense yeah i mean like i said i want him i want to see that happen just to, like uh, like i said on that one play a little bit more my my one thing i noticed with him is is sometimes he will overextend himself when he think that a move is happening and right. that i think comes from him anticipating the player um i want you to react mm. don't anticipate react. don't guess yeah don't yeah. guess yeah because when you're guessing now you're, you're not valuable to nobody because yes. if you if you guess wrong, somebody gets hurt. Yeah. <laughs> so not wrong. We just got to spread oh. out right here, and they change it. Okay, so this is really interesting. So just like we said last time, right? When when they ran that spread out on the goal line, this backside dude was coming in hot right here, and he put a little bit of pressure on Herbert. So what they did is they changed how they set, as opposed to everybody sprinting out here and trying to reach the play side shoulder. What they do is they turn, right? They turn the opposite way, and all that does now is you're putting your back right here on the edge of this guy, but everybody else is going to run into a wall for that offensive lineman who ran against him. Does that, if that makes sense, does that make sense to you, Luke? No, no, it, that, no right? it, it makes perfect sense to me. It makes perfect. I don't know why why the quarterback left. Eat one though. Dude, yeah, like why? 
Right. Like, what? Is, okay. I have a tendency of saying two or three things at once. So y'all please forgive me. But to <laughs> me, once you, once you see he turn right here, the guy that that he's responsible for, oh, they just beating him up all the way down the damn field. But yeah. once he once he once he gets that guy turned, the quarterback needed to be You're talking able about twenty six. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> he's having they, a rough one. Yeah, they, this is why yeah. you don't put backs on ends though, right? This is they why you can't him. account for a back getting yeah. on an end because he's gonna get smoked, man. Yeah, he's, not, I mean, dude's wow. fighting his ass off, and I respect that. But Jesus, but it, it just don't look good. Yeah, <laughs> that's a tall but, task. But Coach, can again, I not do that again? <laughs> again he he could have chopped, chopped him. He could have chopped yeah. him. Try to try yeah. to get the feet yeah. from me from. The one thing about 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 this particular play though with Seawell is, like I said, he he's aware of where they're supposed to be. He follows the assignment. He he's beating up on the dude. But I I, I do notice that right here he's high. Yeah. And oh yeah, for sure. He, he took sure. a hit to the head because he's high. You got you got to keep your oh, keep your yeah. pitcher plans. Yeah. So that way your butt stay down. It's better for you with that butt staying down. Even if they do come high, you win. Oh, this is my see yeah right there. Uh, no, it's out of angle. You can kind of see it right here. Let me see. This is what we're talking about. I'm not sure if we he might. Right. Okay. There. So right there. Oh, it's right when we leave. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, you gotta you gotta you gotta keep that butt down. Again, yeah. I'm still not saying enough to say that he's not worthy of a of a top pick. No, and, and again, people like hopefully you know people understand like we're not sitting here like this dude sucks. Not at all what we're saying. No, all that we're talking about is like these are like the little nitpicky things that we're seeing. We're just having a little fun watching film. Nothing's personal in football, man. Get a little high right here though, Luke. He's a little high. Boom. See how we're yeah. getting up yep. top and, and we get and, thrown and like see, that. We got to stay low. And it's, it is funny because I, I bring up a point and it's still like the very next play. We see it happening again. I'm like, those little things add up. Mm -hmm. Now, this might be fatigue setting in. Yeah. Um, but this is like, we, we got to stay low. We got to work out with the base, right? We're starting in a great spot. And what we're trying to do with this is he's trying to take his inside arm and extend this dude out here and create a lane because they're working. It looks like, again, like the, it looks like they're working wide zone. It could be their split zones, though. though that they, Yeah, this is looks to me like a little bit like their split zone. But... Regardless, on this side of it, we're trying to looks like it, they're trying to run like a wide zone. And what he's trying to do is what I like, what I've called the shot put technique, where he's trying to take his right arm in this situation, put it into this dude's backside shoulder and shot put him out this way and then run him to the sideline. Works great when you're lower, right? You have to be, right. you have to have lower pad level than this guy. You have to be able to run him right out of the gate. Okay. But we get here and then we get skinny with our base. We also don't keep our feet moving. Right. And that's when we get, end up overextending just like Luke was talking about earlier and kind of getting thrown around a little bit. Yeah. I mean, that wasn't even no counter. That was just me showing you, I'm, I got more power than you. Right. Also, not, I love three diving over this pile right here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he try, he, yeah. When you want it, you want it. <laughs> I know, man. I love it. You want it, you want guys, it. Man. But I will, I will say this though. Even though that that's that's a rap that I'm not fond of, mm -hmm. the, the one thing I, I do like is it did enough for the running back to get room. Yeah, it did enough. Right. But and, yeah, and, and that's the thing. And ultimately, right when you're playing, oh, like when, whenever I'm coaching dudes, right, it's like, yes, can, can we do better on this rep? Absolutely. In, in fact, every single rep that you take as a player, there's going to be something that you can do better. But do we get the job done? Absolutely, we get the job done. There's a good rep from him, right? We get three out of the box. We could probably hang on a little bit longer so he's not, you know, trying to dive over the pile and make a play on things. But we we get our assignment done on that play. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I, it's not much that I'm saying that I hate. That's, that's no, the sad part. It's just these little things that I'm looking at. And I'm saying, okay, I can. But you know what? You're you're 100 right. He looks he looks a little gassed. And now we we do have to remember. Yes, he does look tired. This is also the first game of the season for these guys. But we see in a situation like this right here, right? It looks like we're just slide proing, and he keeps his eyes inside. He makes contact with this dude, and I think he gets a little too invested, and we get this looper coming across this way, right? We we got to be more. Yeah. Got to have more of a base. Can't get all the way invested in that, right? We're blocking this gap with our eyes, helping out outside with our body if we need it we get a little too invested it does look like we get a little pile up right here but we got to be uh, a little bit better with our base a little bit better with our with our downstairs in this situation yep. I, th I think it's just fatigue you're seeing right there That's yeah i agree this is, a, this is a slick move by 30 by the way he steps oh, yeah. out right there but that right there is a slick <laughs> but, move. but even so. even with that though if you look at it the guy is coming in high I mean, I, I when I was playing, they used to always tell me as a linebacker, you go in high, you're going to lose an eye because every time yeah. they're going to hit you in the face. Oh, so absolutely. The guy tried to come in high, and yeah, yeah, see, shame on him. <laughs> oh, here we go. Uh -oh. We get some end zone film. Hell yeah. 
we're looking right here, guys. Boom. See, yeah. So yep. what I think he's thinking that this dude's working right up the field, but we're coming across this phase. This is exactly what this game is supposed to do, right? We get this 303 front from the uh from Auburn and the classic bear or double eagle, whichever you want to call it. Um, we try to get super invested with that right there, and we get this looper coming around the top that we miss out on because we're trying to give a shoulder there. We get, I think we gotta be a little bit more a little bit more patient, I guess I would say with that. Well, I mean, but he his initial his initial contact didn't really have he he basically fatigue is setting in. Look at the footwork. Yeah. Um. It's, no, it's, I completely it's, agree. It's a little it's a little lackluster, but yeah. he didn't he didn't have nobody to go and get, so he just said, "I'm gonna stay with the guy that I touch first. It, open your eyes up. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you open your eyes up, they gonna come to you. Oh, that counter. Ooh. Good contact. Got to finish though. Yeah, yep. See, Good not a guy, contact. not a guy is realizing that if I if I bull rush him, if I bull rush him, it, it off it throws him off. Look how he right. anchored his feet right there, yeah. right? Now he's trying to and, and see. You gotta you gotta let them come to you. Let them come to you. He going to him for this run, but if you're going, you gotta you gotta get that guy out of there. Yeah, and, and he to to me he he does that with the first couple of steps, right? Like we're right there, but this is right. a really good job. We got in the right position. Start here. driving, but we got to keep we got to activate the feet, right? We got to activate the feet on contact. We're not doing that. We're trying to just what he's trying to do right here is he's trying to rely on his strength and his power and the fact that he's six whatever and three hundred whatever, and he's just gonna bully dudes off the rock. But we have to understand we're playing here. Like three is not a bad football player. He's going no. to be able to get. Uh, he's he's going to be able to work his set. Like look at the base that we have here, as opposed to the base that we have there. This is an athletic base where we're trying to work underneath on this because we see where that football is going. Right, he's a little bit o a little bit over uh, overextended. Yeah, but we can't rely on our strength and power to just throw dudes around. Is basically what I'm getting. At. Nope. And this is where those small things become important for me. You know, yeah. it, I understand you're tired. I understand that the that you need some Gatorade, but <laughs> You orange slices at halftime oh, yeah something colors. right <laughs> you know what i mean mine was what's mccallis that was my little halftime like did you get a what's mccallis yeah, yeah man dude, that get me oh, going. Here we go. hmm. the other thing that that i think we could be is is our hand placement right here with our right hand it looks like we're a little bit high yep. right i would rather have him be right like in this dude's lap does that make sense? It looks yep. like we're high and on his shoulder pad as opposed to a little bit farther down and in this dude's lat. Then we could really get that extension and work this dude out of out of there. And I realized something too. Not only did the guy call a counter, but he just tried to throw the guy. Mm -hmm. That's not what we're asking you to do. Stay stay engaged, but move him. Right. You know, you, this whole idea, I'm just gonna throw him. It didn't work. Yeah, exactly. No, and that's that's exactly what I'm saying. He's trying to re rely on that strength, rely on that power, but we we can't, especially at, at the NFL level. You're not gonna be able to get away with that. No, you're not. No, no. That's if that's uh if, if that's JJ Watts or Cameron Jordan or yeah, you're not just tossing them to the side like no, that. not at all. <laughs> Right here, you know, they're, they're, we're trying to work a combo right here with guard and tackle. Um, guard works off, but we're in a bad position right here as yep. a tackle. We're a little yep. bit too far upfield, right? So now we get a double team where our guard is almost pushing this way, and we're pushing this way when we need to get these hips together. I mean, and this is the same stuff from Pop Warner to high school to college to the NFL. If you get hips together, you're going to move dudes. When we don't have hips together like that right there, we're not going to move guys. We're going to get beat at the line of scrimmage, which is exactly yeah. what happens. Yeah. He, he, the one thing the one thing I'm noticing immediately is he should be way more powerful Yeah, on these run blocks. Well, it, and you know what it is. Look at how high he is. That, right, that's, that's, again, the, trend, the tendencies the tendencies from the beginning are starting to show up as the game goes on. And yeah. those are things that I look at, those little small tendencies. Um, but yeah, he should he should be eating that person alive. Yeah. Oh, here we go. Also, I hate uh, our first step right here. Yep. I was just gonna right. say, look at we that. We got to step there. We got to get upfield, and it looks like he steps back. Let's take yep. a look. Yeah. Yeah. That step first back. step right there. That'll kill you, right? We got to get upfield right here, man. Because look at where it places us, right? Our guard stepped upfield. But now our hips are here and our guards hips are here. We're not parallel. We're not centered. We're not moving guys, right? We're behind on this combo. We're late, 
we're going to get there quicker. We're going to be better at that first step. Yep. Little things. I know people are probably like, oh, man, y'all nitpicky. That's yeah. okay. <laughs> That's okay. Being nitpicky lets you know what your player has. And a lot of the stuff that you're seeing, they're fixable. They're so small and minute, oh, they're fixable. Now, absolutely. when I see something that's ugly, then you're going you're gonna to hear me go, this is unacceptable. Oh, I, I love that rap. That's a good job. I love that rap. A little high. I would say we're a little high with this. True. But, but he never lost did. leverage. No, he, not at all. He allowed the guy. He allowed the guy to do what he wanted over there. Yeah, go ahead and go over there because you ain't. You're nowhere near the play. Yeah, I agree. And look at this is that inside arm that we talked about, right? As opposed yep. to that other rep, where we're just trying to throw dudes around. No, let's be patient. Let's be smart with our center, right? Let's be good with that outside that inside arm, which is exactly what we do. Boom. You want to work outside? Work outside, man. Q's not there, and we need to catch the ball, eighty. <laughs> right. Don't do him like. That. Oh my oh, God. See, that, that, <laughs> listen. Everybody gets mad at me for for chewing out receivers for body catching, but I'm like I I'm I'm, I'm like you have your you got hands. Use yeah. Them. Use your hands. We missed the kick. Oh. Well, that's yeah, that's unfortunate. Uh, <laughs> oh, there's three. That's the guy that he's been going up against all game. All right, let's see. So who's that? Let's get to this next. I don't know. I, I don't know who three is. It looks like his last name's Davidson. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Davidson. It's not ringing yeah, a he's, bell. He's playing a good football game. Let's see where we at. I'm trying to find the next offensive possession. Okay, Auburn kicks three. All right, here we go. Oh, show me end zone film, please, because I. Okay, here we go. Thank you. So, I mean, what do we talk about, man? Right? We're bit. We're a big dog. We're gonna throw dudes around. You can't do that. You and you threw him in the play. You, you need you, to rely. You can't rely on your strength. You need to rely on your technique, which is exactly what happens here. And again, where we work with that first step, right? Here's this foot right here. We're going to step back on this first step, right? Yep. There. Right? That first yep. step puts us at a disadvantage, right? We're ducking our head. We're not getting to that play side shoulder. Uh, not a good rep. Not a good rep from, from nope. 58 in that situation. And, and the worst part about it is, is this. If you, if you, if you're going to try to use this quote unquote power, don't throw him into the play. You know, you got to get across his face. Yeah. Like, you know, this, you know, you got to get across his face. And instead of you getting across his face, you're just going to throw him in the play. Oh, I'm strong. No, you just, you, you help them. You help 100%. them. You just so, toss them right into the, into the mix. Yeah. Don't, don't toss him into the play. Uh, what I would like to see him do is this. Once he gets engaged, stay engaged. Yeah. You know, stay to him. If they say flies on poop, get on him. Yeah, okay. and the other thing, and the thing that'll help with that, that ties in to exactly what you're talking about, we make contact here and then watch our feet. Our feet die. We're not moving our feet. We're not trying to get in better position. We need to accelerate our feet on contact. I mean, when we're making contact here, we're running these feet, right? Not overstepping. We're chopping these feet, running these feet, working our helmet to get in, in better placement, not throwing dudes into the play. Uh, not, not a good rep. Not a good rep from 58. And again, just so people know, not personal, just seeing what we see. Right. Just going by the fam. Fam going to tell us what we need to know. Um, I, like I said, Good I want that running back, by the way. Yeah, he yeah, he found he found the little daylight. <laughs> Let's see what we got going on with this one. It's the same, right? Now we got a different dude in there, though, right? We got 91. Yeah. We knew we knew three was flying up field. 91, right? He'll put he'll hammer on the brakes and get back into that thing. And again, the guy, <laughs> this is the thing I understand about some of the things I'm looking at with this game in particular. The guy is using all his energy outside. Let's take mm. him outside. Yes, completely he, agree. He's not taking him outside. He's he's just trying to stonewall him right there. I need you to take him out. Take him out and get him out my Boom. way. Right. Extend that right inside here? arm. Yep. Run those feet. Let him get by you. And that's, then run that's those feet. Get him out of the way. That's a sled drill 100% of the time. Mm. All, all power. Just move him. Because if if, they, if he's going up against a guy like Von Miller, that that play is dead. oh god, oh, oh god. I need to score on it too. That's the worst. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> again, his feet stop. Yeah, working into our set. I don't. I don't hate his set. He's nice. He's calculated. He's smooth. Working back. But it's once he gets there, make contact stop. right. Yep. We get beat to that inside. We're a little bit soft on the inside, right? Watch, watch ninety-one. He's gonna push Sewell right with, right there, 
and see how we get them off balance like that, then it's yep. it's game over because we're too high, right? And I know, yeah, we're trying to lean right and all that stuff, but we're a little bit too far back. Maybe we're losing balance. Bottom line, oh, those feet went straight flat on that. If you go back and you just look yeah, at it, um, very good point. They went straight flat, and once they went flat and stopped, that's where the push. Look, mm-hmm. boom. Got to keep them feet going. Now he's now he's on. Pa- oh, then the quarterback take a hit that he don't got to take. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's rough. Like yeah. I said, it's rough. This, like I said, you're not going to have great film across the board. You're going to get oh, beat yeah. time. No player in the history of football has ever had game film where every single snap he's looking good. He's not making mistakes. Stuff like this is going to happen. It's a big time play from 18 playing out uh, playing. And I start, and I'm starting to notice something else about his game. Those little speedier guys look like they're giving him a bit of a problem. Yeah. Just got the rock. Here. Let me see. Um, let's, I think we'll watch. You want to watch one more drive and then we'll f- flip over to one of the other guys? Sure. We'll do a little wrap up on Sewell. Let's see if we can get the right. Here we go. I think they threw a pick. All right, here we All right go. so now we're playing at the top, going the other way. Still looks like he's just, you, you know what it is? It's like he, he, he's like wearing these, like he's not making contact. He's not extending the arms. And like, I get it right here, right? You don't want, cause a lot of times when you extend your arms, you're opening yourself up to get a counter thrown on you. When you grab that dude and you bring him in nice and tight, he can't go anywhere right now. He's in a box, but I'd love to see us a little bit more physical, right? And all that we're trying to do in this is work our hips this way and not let this dude make the play. Which yeah. you do accomplish, but I mean, we could look better doing it. That's for sure. And like I said, it, sometimes I remember. Uh, uh, I, I think it was a movie, or it might have been one of my coaches who told me this. He said, uh, "If you make a mistake, do it aggressively." Yeah. And, and I'm not seeing that level of aggression when he's doing it. Uh, sometimes I've seen him lean up on players. That's kind of bothering me a little bit. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, like I said, that's, it, that's, that's a good rep, right? Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Boom, right? Work that outside. This is what we're talking about right here, right? This dude's going to take it outside. Work this inside arm right into his lat. Extend your arms like that. Run your feet, right? This is a much better job. And look yep. what happens, though, right? We open this edge up for this running back to go. Now yeah, he's not having to keep this tight because we've got a dude coming over the top this way, right? We're getting beat at our guard spot. But we extend the arm. We run our feet. We open up a gap. This is a good rep from him. Right, you're allowing the guys momentum to take them out of the play. That's that's what you want. That's what you want to do. Um, one of the things I'm also been looking at is I'm want to see is he is he setting his defender up. Mm. Um, I'm not. I haven't seen too much of that. One of the things I liked about Joe Thomas, Joe Thomas will look like it was about to be bad and will set you up for the okie doke. Yeah. See, this is a bad rep from him, and, and this is one of those things, right? O line wise. You know, sometimes when you're on the backside of a play, guys will take plays off, and that's what this looks like to me. What do you think? Well, wait a minute. Is that the guard or is that the tackle right he's, there? Okay, he's there right you go. here. But yeah. watch, watch this cat right here. Right, taking that play off. Three's coming over the top. Yeah. He's in on a tackle. But what down is that? That's the uh, uh, first. First, and yeah. I don't even. I don't even know if that's. I don't even know if I can call that fatigue. Um, no, this, this is this is this sloppy technique. It yeah. Looks like. I mean. Yeah, it's, I don't know what that. And then he, again, the over is yeah, the over is standing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah just, we're kind of reaching at guys right instead of working inside right like that. Get your helmet to that play side shoulder. Three's a dog, man. I wonder where. I wonder if he's in, in the league now. I think he might be. I'm trying to think of Davidson. What was his first name? Carl. I want to say it was. I don't know. We we got to take a look at him after this though, for sure. This isn't a bad rep working up. So he, once again, Oregon's in their jumbo stuff, tight end, H, whatever you want to call it. There's our tackle right here, working right up to that. And so now, and I'm going to nitpick on this one. I'm going to nitpick. Love the fact that we're getting up to the second level. We're going to the right spot. There's no reason why this dude should be on your inside, though. There's nope. zero reason for this. Nope. Right? We get this backer working out this way. You should be working right up on the inside. Know where this ball's going, man. This ball, this isn't a sweep. This is downhill inside zone with a lamp, right? We got to work up to the end. He's not the reason this play got got stopped. Nothing like that. It's just me nitpicking right here. You have to work to this dude's inside. Right. Have to, have to. 
And they, they in, a, in an NFL, when, when most refs are looking for it, is is oh, your hands know. outside? If your hands are outside, they're automatically calling that that holding or, or uh, yeah, it's I don't know how. <laughs> That, it's that's also weird... super high on this too. Yeah, like we what? The, I'm like what the high. heck? Look at that! You can oh, see you can see the bottom of his feet. Yeah, yeah. Work up field, get inside on that. He knew he messed up. You saw you saw him at the end of the play. Yeah, yeah. he knew yeah, he, he messed up. So we're working Ooh. a quick. Oh yeah, we're, we're working a quick screen here. You, you know something with, with this and again i i don't know what they teach at that level for me i would never like j- just for me I, I usually i don't coach guys i don't want to say i would never i don't i don't like it when dudes work out like this open their hips and shuffle like i that's i'm not a fan of that get into your kick keep your shoulders toward the line of scrimmage create that hard edge for defenders to go around you give uh, you give a d lineman your chest like this you're begging to get bull rushed especially at his height oh yeah Oh yeah, one of the things I got really so as a kid, I got a chance to meet some NFL players when I um, was playing, and uh, uh, by chance, like I, I met Warren. Uh, well, um, I met Warren Sapp. Um, oh, you did? I met Warren Sapp. Uh, just, awesome. just, just talking to him like, hey, you know, but he didn't tell me nothing. But I met Javon Curse. <laughs> Javon oh, Curse. Javon Curse was a bad dude. Dude, he told me. He said I met him and I met Ray Lewis. Um, and Javon Curse told me that as a linebacker or anything on defense, if you want to beat a lineman when you're blitzing or you're going at them, mm-hmm. if they open that chest plate up, put their pass on their chin. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, he showed me a few moves. I took it back to school with me, and I promise you, it worked. I took yeah. it to college. Marlon Davidson. It's the there we go. Time. Thank you. I know. I, w- yep. I wanted to. So just really quick, I, I stopped the the stream for Sue. I just want to hit on some of these comments because I know we've had a couple of comments coming in here. Marlon Davidson, Izzy, appreciate you um, very much so for for looking that up. Hopefully he's doing well in the NFL because he looked really good um, in that game. Uh, picked in the second round by the Falcons. Okay, so we'll take a look at that.